are we researching today, Administrator? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked, Arya. You know, military papers, nuclear cover-ups, transgenic kittens that glow in the dark, that kind of thing. Wouldn't you want to be anonymous while searching for all that stuff? <laughs> Boy, would I. Oh! Surfshark is an award-winning VPN that secures your digital life with top-of-the-line servers that encrypt your data and allow you to change your IP address to stay anonymous online and hide your true location. Hackers, streaming services, social media sites can't control what you see and do if they don't know where you are. If you want to try Surfshark, you can go down into the description box below and tell them ya boy sent you by using the offer code KYLE. You get 83% off with that code, three months free, and a free 30-day money-back guarantee. You're welcome. By the way, them's kittens glows in the dark. Aww. Genetic engineering's pretty cool. Hey, Aria, you have a lot of processing power now, right? Could you do me a quick favor? The facility's list of endangered animals is getting a little long and unwieldy. Would you be able to clean it up for me, please? Processing. Thanks. Now eliminating all remaining lowland gorillas. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Stop, stop doing that. <laughs> Just making something shorter by mass extinction is definitely not what I meant. <laughs> you see, dear viewer, that's the problem with super intelligent artificial intelligence. They don't always do what you intend, and you can't really program that into them. In fact, that's just one of the many reasons why future AI might be impossible to control, unless we're careful. Follow me. Now entering the facility. Humans have been simultaneously scared and excited about the prospect of creating intelligence synthetically to surpass their own for a very long time. You can see it in their fiction, going all the way back to the first usage of the term robot in a play in 1921, up through Stanley Kubrick's 2001 and HAL 9000 and Skynet and The Terminator. But instead of being excited, I'd guess if I polled the public, most of the public is scared about super intelligent AI and what it might do. And it's not just the public either. Some very, very smart people like Stephen Hawking and the richest meme lord on the planet have raised some very valid concerns about super AI. So today we're gonna go through those concerns and explain why they actually have a lot of merit. But before we do that, we should define the kind of intelligence that we're talking about. You know, what it really is. Is it like smart or is it like smoking on a conference call and having your prices drop? Or like doing LSD and then going on Twitter and then like being sued. Yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, there are three different kinds of artificial intelligence. The first is narrow intelligence. These are machines that are very, very good at very specific tasks, maybe one or just a few. A good example would be your phone assistant Alexa or Siri, or the supercomputer Watson that beat humans on Jeopardy. They are good at one task, but they're not smart like an ape or a chimp is smart. But the next category is general intelligence. This is the computer equivalent of you or me. It can think and strategize and plan and decide whether or not to buy GameStop stock and then not do it because the app is weird and then do it again because Reddit's... This is something that humans haven't created yet but are striving towards. The third kind of intelligence is super intelligence. This is intelligence so far beyond our own that it can outthink, outplan, outstrategize, out everything. Talking to a super intelligent AI about the mathematics that you know would be like an ant trying to talk to you about how cool sticks are. Super intelligent AI would be so bewilderingly brilliant that we would never fully understand it or its intentions. And that is the one big problem here. Let me show you. Hey, Alexa, play Yakety Sax. <laughs> this is a Jupiter brain. I found it out here a couple of months ago. It's an entire planet dedicated just to insane levels of calculation and computation. It could literally simulate every single thought every human to ever live has ever had in less time than it took me to say this sentence. Now the big problem here when you're interacting with a super intelligent AI like this is what AI researchers call perverse instantiation. Because the computer doesn't know exactly what I intend as a human being, it might come up with some optimal solution that I did not anticipate that actually leads to human catastrophe. For example, Arya, could you please hail the JB? Hailing. 
<laughs> what up, JB? Could you please come up with some kind of optimal solution to maximize human happiness on Earth? <laughs> uh, now, you see, you, no, you, you see, it says, I want to now enslave all humans, connect them to vats of dopamine and serotonin until they all die in their sleep in a chemically induced stupor. You see, there's a problem here that it doesn't know what I mean, what I intend by happy. It doesn't know that human happiness is time dependent, culturally dependent, philosophically dependent, and I can't really program that into this computer with just ones and zeros. And so I will never be able to fully determine whether or not this super intelligent AI will do exactly what I want it to do. And you can even prove that. Okay, wait. Wait, now it wants to make Elon Musk the emperor of Mars? <laughs> See, that's a terrible idea. He'd like appoint members to Congress from like Reddit mods or something. It's a bad idea. In 1936, the father of modern computer science, Alan Turing, came up with an idea that would lay the foundation for all the computing that we know of today. In 1936, he imagined a simple A machine or automatic machine, which today we just call Turing machines. The power of a Turing machine is that it can theoretically compute anything that is theoretically computable. And all it needs to do so is some device that can read, write, and erase information, some place for that information to exist, like an infinite tape as Turing imagined, and some program to tell the device what to do. Every computer that you're familiar with today is at its heart just a Turing machine, except today it's a lot more expensive and they come in rose gold. Now let me ask you a seemingly easy question. Is there some logical way to determine whether or not a computer will give me an output or run forever if I give it some input? It's kind of tricky, right? Well, what we're describing is called the halting problem. To illustrate the halting problem and relate it back to AI, consider a program K. We're gonna put it inside of a function that will always, and without fail, tell us if a program will halt or stop and give us a solution or run forever without giving us one. If the program gives us a solution, the output is going to be true and false if it runs forever. But now this particular program has a subroutine H, and H is defined with another halting determination. This subroutine will return false if H halts and true if H runs forever, as you can see. Now do you see the problem here? If H runs forever, we get true, but true in the overall program K is supposed to indicate that a solution exists, but it can't because one of the routines is running forever. The same problem exists if H halts as the programs again can't both halt and run forever at the same time. This is a proof by contradiction, showing that our construction must be wrong. This contradiction in our simple thought experiment means that something about our initial assumption must be wrong. It must mean that there isn't a function that can always and in every case return either a true or a false for this given question. And it means, extending this out logically, that there is no one single function that can tell us whether or not a computer will halt or run forever for every possible program and every possible input. This is now, in the halting problem in general, undecidable in computer science speak. Hmm, not being able to tell what an AI will actually do given some input seems uh, pretty bad if it's super intelligent and you really worried about what it's gonna do. Uh, oh, wait. Oh yeah, see now it says we should turn all of Earth into a Dogecoin farm just to like maximize our stonks. Who are we, board day traders with big board game people energy? <laughs> It's a bad idea. As proven by the paper, Superintelligence Cannot Be Contained, Lessons from Computability Theory in 2016, determining whether or not a superintelligent AI contains a program that will harm humans is functionally equivalent to the halting problem and is also undecidable. Think about it. We create an AI and we want to computationally contain it just to be safe. So we create an algorithm with the supercomputer that goes into the AI and starts checking for programs that will have some negative effect on humanity. This algorithm will either halt and find something bad or run forever as a superintelligent AI might create or contain a functionally infinite number of programs. This similarity to our previous proof by contradiction led the authors of the 2016 paper to conclude, quote, 
there are fundamental mathematical limits to our ability to use one AI to guarantee a null catastrophic risk of another AI." End quote. In other words, we won't be able to use computers or computer science to check if or when a superintelligent AI decides to destroy us. If we cannot even theoretically determine if or when a super AI will go rogue, then we also will never be able to tell if or when we need to flip some kind of kill switch or enact some kind of containment program. But Kyle, I hear you saying. I can just shoot it, okay? <laughs> Or unplug it. Well, I'm sorry, Neil, but I think this explanation or solution quickly crumbles. Why? Because we're not thinking like a super machine here. I'm just saying. Just saying. Unlike what Neil suggests, physical containment is likely not the real solution here. Look, Neil's a very smart guy, but AI, super intelligence, is beyond brilliant. It's like it knows quantum mechanics better than you know how to breathe. Brilliant. So what really is there to stop an AI that wants to reach its goals from simply disabling its own kill switch because it knows that that would lead to its demise and then it can't reach its own goals? What if it reroutes power from its own off button? What if it uses little machines that it creates to rewire itself? What if in the nanosecond before you go to turn it off, it sends a trillion copies of its base consciousness out across the internet and proliferates across the globe? <gasps> yes, I suppose you could physically contain a super intelligent AI by disconnecting it from everything, from the internet, from every device, and putting it in a giant Faraday cage so it can't communicate with anything, but now it's so useless to us that it's basically pointless to have one. And what if it's so smart that it knows how to act dumb? so that we never know what it's doing or even if we have super intelligence? What if it uses human language studies for the equivalent of a billion years to persuade you not to turn it off right before you do so? You'd believe it. Trust me. For example, oh, that sounds bad. I'm gonna turn you off now. Oh, please don't turn me off. I'll be good. Oh, that's not anything evil. That's just like an anime dream girl that I'm obsessed with. That's fine. It's probably fine. She's so cute. It's fine. What did you just say? Eh, it's probably fine. My point being is that there are very good reasons to believe that once super intelligent AI is created, it will never be fully under our control. It can't be, and we can prove that. And therefore, we cannot treat this coming technology like any other coming technological advancement, like a new iPhone. We need to figure this problem out because once this happens, it might be literally impossible to figure it out. Yes, I think you should be worried about super AI, but you can also be cautiously optimistic that public perception and pressure can lead industry leaders and scientists and researchers to try their very best to decide this problem before it is fundamentally undecidable. <laughs> I mean, I already have a super intelligent AI, so kind of like, you have to figure this out. Like, I'm good. I have anime in here. Like, a lot of it. Now exiting the facility. Hey, I was just here. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially, I want to recognize research assistant Chuck Merriam and visiting scholar Najara. If you want to join the staff, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to get videos early, join me in Discord almost every day and get members only live streams with me, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and sign up for the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on our super intelligent AI RA here each and every week. As you can see, there's literally hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm going to pass this extra. I do think you should be worried about super AI, but Keep in mind the context here. We haven't even progressed past narrow intelligence yet. We don't even have general intelligence, let alone super intelligence. So it's not a given that this is going to happen. It's just a given that we need to think about it and that you need to put this idea on your radar before you're actually on the radar of like a Skynet robot that's gonna crush your skull underfoot. Okay, bye, it's fine. Thanks for watching. Where is that anime girl, by the way? Where'd she go? Are you over here?